Welcome to our review on detecting gases. So what we actually need to be able to do as part of our chemistry GCSE is identify a gas using some form of experimental procedure. So the first gas we're going to have a look at is carbon dioxide. And the way that we'll actually be able to detect whether the gas we're producing is carbon dioxide is we bubble it through a chemical called lime water and that goes from colourless to cloudy. And you can see that in the bottom picture there. Go careful though with the phrasing that you use for this, because if you use a phrase like clear, that's not going to get you the mark. You have to say the word colourless. So test for carbon dioxide, lime water goes from colourless to cloudy. When we're talking about lime water, what we're actually referring to is a calcium hydroxide solution. And what actually happens with that calcium hydroxide is that when we introduce carbon dioxide to it, a reaction occurs. And as a product of that reaction, we get water and calcium carbonate. And the calcium carbonate is the one that makes that lime water go cloudy because the calcium carbonate is a white precipitate, so a white solid that floats around within the water. I've given you the word equation and the balance symbol equation at the bottom there. So we start off with calcium hydroxide and carbon dioxide as our reactants, and we make calcium carbonate and water as our products. And then you can see the symbols at the bottom. Our second gas that we need to know how to test for is chlorine. So when we've got chlorine and it dissolves in water, then it will form an acidic substance and it will bleach substances which changes them from a coloured compound to a colourless one. So using that knowledge, we actually reveal our chlorine test. We've got the indicator paper called litmus paper, and in this case we're using blue litmus paper. So the first thing we do is we make it moist by using a drop of tap water. Then if you've got your test gas, so a container that contains it, and you hold that damp blue litmus paper just above the surface, so it's just near the container itself, then what we'll see is initially it will go a red colour and then it will be bleached to white. So if it goes red and then is bleached to white, we have chlorine gas. And you can see that in the picture at the bottom right there. So the very end on the left hand side, the bit of litmus paper there, you can see has been bleached white. And then in the middle section, you can see it's that kind of pinky red colour. So that tells us we've made an acidic substance, which we know forms when chlorine dissolves in water, and then the chlorine will bleach the chemicals. So we end up with that colourless compound, hence it looks white. Our third gas we need to know how to test for is hydrogen. So this could be in a question that links back to the work that we did on the group one alkali metals, because in the reaction of our alkali metals with water, they made hydrogen gas. So you could get that follow up question on how we could prove it was hydrogen gas. So the test for hydrogen is we get a lit splint. So one of those little wooden splints. And when you hold that in the tube with the gas, it makes a squeaky pop sound. So lit splint makes a squeaky pop. Then it's hydrogen. The last gas test we need to know is the one for oxygen. And what we're going to do to test for oxygen is when we've got our tube with our unknown gas, if we get a glowing splint and hold it in that tube, if it's oxygen, it relights. The last point to bear in mind is about how we're actually going to smell substances safely in the lab. Now, hopefully when you've made any kind of a chemical, you've not shoved the tube right under your nose and taken in a nice deep whiff, because that's only going to end badly for you in chemistry. So our first and foremost rule is never inhale directly from the container. At no point should your nose be anywhere near the top of that container or the reaction vessel. You should always hold the actual container a few centimetres away and then you do this almost a royal wave in order to waft the smell gently towards you and take a cautious sniff. So the idea is you just get that little hint of the sniff and the actual scent coming from that chemical, you're not inhaling deeply to take it all the way into your lungs and fill them with whatever random gas you happen to have made. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can now describe those lab tests that we use in order to detect oxygen, hydrogen, carbon dioxide, and chlorine, and you can describe how to smell substances safely in the lab.